In many D&D games, at least half of the game is combat, and a huge part of making your combats more engaging and fun for your players is awesome narrative descriptions during said combat. However, there are eight big narrative description pitfalls that we are all prone to make. Number one, describing every action Every die roll. Call upon the strength in your legs and burst forward toward the enemy. Pulling your sword from the sheath, you hear that sk as it is released, and you grab it and you pull it back, and tensing your arms, you swing. The enemy ducks away, and so you swing again, you thrust. Blood is drawn. The enemy grunts as you deal a minor wound, and you prepare yourself to defend against the enemy's almost assured counter strike. I mean, yeah, that sounds cool, I guess, maybe, but how long do you think you can keep that up? How creative do you think you can be over and over and over again as you describe every little thing? And does that need to happen for everything? And, and how much time will it take if every Everyone gives narrative descriptions for every little tiny thing they do in combat. The battles will bog down. They could last hours. They'll be beautiful. They'll sound amazing, but they'll take hours. Now, this can be the default of folks who watch lots of online D&D games where the Dungeon Master and players give epic and amazing descriptions of lots of things. Probably almost everything they do. But that's a D&D show, and you're playing a D&D game. My advice is to not go overboard because it bogs the game down. And there are only so many ways you can describe some things. So, you know, the descriptions you come up with are gonna get stale. Also, describing everything leaves no room for our imaginations, which can fill in a lot of gaps if you let them. It's okay to simply say that you attack, roll dice, and do damage, and you deal 15 hit points of damage. It's, it's perfectly fine to keep things simple at times. Not everything needs to be described. In fact, what I do recommend you do instead is focus on describing important things. Critical hits, critical fumbles or misses, killing an enemy, a spell going off, and doing something amazing. Things like that. Not everything needs narrative description. Number two, not describing anything. <laughs> the opposite of point number Number one, I mean, like, no one describes anything. Like everything is just talked about in game mechanic terms. You hit, you roll dice, it hits, you do damage, blah, 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 blah. They're reduced to zero hit points and they're dead. I mean, you have an exciting combat going on and all we're gonna do is describe it with dry numbers and game mechanics. That is like a massive opportunity missed if that's what we do. But Luke, we're, we're, we're all horrible at narrative descriptions. What can we do? I'm so melodramatic. Okay, so there are some things you can do. Number one, read books. Woo! I'm finding books for you. All right, here is a big old pile of books. And you might notice the name on here, R.A. Salvatore. He is a master at narrative descriptions and combat in his books. Now, if you don't want to read the Drizzt series, that's fine. He's written lots of other books you can check out. He's really, really good at combat descriptions. Because when you read books and you expose yourself to those narrative descriptions of combat, you're going to probably get better at it yourself. Number two, visualize it in your own mind first and then simply describe what you see. This is exactly what I do, in fact. I see it up here, I visualize it, then I simply describe what I'm seeing in my head to my players. Number three, practice. You will get better. And number four is to pay someone else to do it for you. Quintessential solution to all the world's problems if you have the cash for it, right? So Describe.com has thousands of finely crafted narrative descriptions for almost every part of your D&D game. You can search for specific actions in the handy search field to find precisely what you need or you can use the tags feature. There you can instantly find everything that describes different things that might happen in combat. Then you simply choose what you need and read or paraphrase the narrative description to your players. So click that link below and browse through tons of free content that describe offers. And if you decide to go with a paid subscription and unlock even more, be sure to use the discount code, the DM layer to get 10% off your first purchase. By the way, I am the king of paying other people to do the things that I am not good at myself. Uh, it works very, very well. You get better results and you save yourself frustrations. It's that's just the way it is. Number three, descriptions that are too long. You see the orc charging at you and you tense your body up. You bring your kite shield in close and raise your sword. 
the sword. The orc swings its axe down at you and you raise it up, hiding behind your shield. You can feel the axe mash against your shield, forcing you backward two paces. You recover your balance, you brace yourself, and you pull your sword up for the great counter stroke. You can see the trepidation, the fear in the orc's eyes after it smashed you with all of its strength, but you are still on your feet and your shield, magical, although the orc does not know it, did not break under its blow. And now the orc is about to meet its doom. That knowledge glistens in its eyes as you prepare to strike. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. You keep it short and sweet. Very nice, very beautiful, but short. The orc charges you, brings his ax down, smokes your shield, but you roll off from the blow and counter strike with your sword. That's it, that's that's all you gotta do. It's really easy and short. You see cool stuff, but it's just short cool stuff, not long cool stuff. Because you do want to evoke amazing imagery in your imaginations. But if the description goes on too long, it can bog the game down. Drama is a good thing. Being over dramatic or longly dramatic is probably not. I'm like the king of over dramatic, so I should probably not talk. <laughs> Number four, the players describe nothing. It's all on the dungeon master. Like whoever said the dungeon master has to do all of the narrative descriptions. The dungeon master prepares the game to be run. The dungeon master makes the NPCs. The dungeon master helps you create your character. The dungeon master prepares the, the monsters in the adventure. The dungeon master runs the game. The dungeon master does this, that, and the other. Every, like the dungeon master does everything. And then also is responsible for the narrative descriptions of everything in the game. Like where is it written? The dungeon master has to do everything. I, I don't think it's in there. So no, the players can obviously give descriptions of the things their characters do too. I love it when players do this for their standard action. One thing I do is ask players to describe killing blows to enemies. But Luke, my players won't describe anything. What should they do? I mean, yeah, this, this is a standard thing that you're gonna run into as a dungeon master. My advice is twofold. First, set the example by describing things yourself. There's a chance it's gonna run off and make your Characters, we say players, make your players feel more comfortable themselves so that they will describe things. Second, ease them into narrative descriptions by just asking them to describe critical hits and killing blows. When they do a critical hit, when they kill an enemy, simply ask them, okay, could you just tell me what this looks like? But you gently ask, and if they decline, that's okay, you describe it. But don't give up. Gently ask every time, but don't push them. Just keep doing it. Eventually, players might warm up to it, and if they don't, that's okay. I have a player in my Sword Coast Guard game, well, it's now our Curse of Strahd game, who hated apparently doing narrative descriptions at first. He would always decline. He would never want to do that. However, he has slowly begun doing them more and more, and either is starting to not hate it quite as much or maybe enjoy it or something, I don't know, or or maybe he's just doing it to make, to appease me, I have no idea. But he's slowly warmed to it for whatever reason and now he's doing it. By the way, if you like bacon or bacon substitutes, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment for the algorithm down below. I mean, I, I guess if you're finding the information in this video helpful, you can give me a thumbs up too. That would be acceptable as well, I suppose. Also, are there actually bacon substitutes? Is that even a thing? And if it is a thing, should it be? These are the important questions we ask ourselves at night, ladies and gentlemen. Lying in bed, unable to sleep, thinking about bacon. Number five, describing every blow as horrific. So something has 100 hit points and you describe eight hit points of damage as a massive wound. I mean, it kind of begs the question of how the creature could still be up and still take massive amounts of damage before it goes down. No, instead, those are small cuts and bruises. When something is past 50% of its hit points down, that is when it is starting to look lightly wounded. Only when a creature is moderately wounded or nearing death should the blows start to be serious. Only a killing blow should rip a gash into something that tears through internal organs. In other words, keep your descriptions realistic in terms of game mechanics that coexist. Number six, not using all five senses. Yes, we can see the sword slice open the orc's thigh, great but also describe the orc's grunt of pain, Ugh. the smell of blood seeping into the air, the sound of blood spattering onto the floor as it retreats back a step. Spattering or is it splattering? Mm. The feel of its hot breath as it yells at the character in anger, promising to slice her from head to heel. Like 
head to heel. That's a that's a really good slice. But don't describe all five senses at once. You see the previous pitfall of descriptions that are too long. Just pick one or two senses to focus on for one description, and then rotate around the senses for subsequent narrative descriptions. Number seven, not describing opponents' reactions. Okay, so you hack at the orc with your sword, you deal damage. The orc grunts in pain, retreats back a step, holds its wounded side, and snarls at you, promising vengeance. You see, the trap is to describe only what the character does. However, we can also describe the enemy's reactions to the blows, or when the character misses and the enemy gloats over them. Now, the opponent's reactions are flavor text, of course. They're not actual game mechanics of reactions that they are taking. Somebody's gonna get confused and be like, oh, I, I, they have to take a reaction? No, no, it's just, it's flavor. It's just flavor, We're narrative description. Work with me here. Number eight, not using narrative transitions. Jim Bob, you see Samantha hack at that orc. It grunts in pain and nearly falls. However, there are two orcs swarming around the wizard. What would you like to do? Now you see, that sort of thing makes combat flow more seamlessly from player to player and it sets the stage for the next player. You can use this to set up difficult decisions or conundrums for that player, increasing the drama of the moment. Click on the screen now to learn how to make rewards in DD more interesting than just giving out more gold, or to become a DM Lair patron, get an issue of Lair Magazine every month, and play DD with me. And until next time, if you use bacon substitutes, I don't think we can be friends anymore, sorry.